Hey guys, Sam from Memphis Makes. How are you all? Welcome back to all my returners and hi to any newbies. It's so great to have you all here and please do stick around a while. So it is Monday when you are seeing this. So what happens here on Memphis Makes on a Monday is Magazine Monday. Now, just a quick backstory for any of you that may be new here is I have a stash of older crochet magazines. These are not the current issues that are on the market, um, but I had a subscription a few years ago um, when I first started my crochet journey or fairly new into it anyway. And I was receiving these wonderful magazines every month with all the intentions of making all the things. And still to this day, guys, I have never made anything from any of them. However, as crafters, we know that having a stash of patterns to hand is always useful. And I just thought it would be interesting to take a look back at these older magazines and see what was around back then, what was in fashion, what everyone was uh, getting excited about, what the crazes were, etc. And I just thought it would be a nice little retrospective look on a publication that is still available today. If you see anything today that you really, really like, a bit of useful information is that you can still get back issues online should you wish to get a copy. They also do an e-copy without the actual physical magazine coming to you that you can have in your computer. Um, and also you can still get a subscription. So if you wanted to take out a subscription, you are more than able to. And it is available to you guys across the pond as well as us because this is a UK publication that I am showcasing. Um, just a little FYI and something to be mindful about. Every pattern in these magazines are written in UK terms. However, there are conversion charts at the back of every issue, so if you need to convert the stitches from UK terminology to US terminology, they make it very easy for you to do so. And also, as you can imagine, there are many things online that can help you convert them. Also, you can Google, you can YouTube, etc. So there are ways and means of you being able to make these patterns, even if it's not written in the terminology you are used to. And a little fun fact, which a lot of you already know, I actually prefer US terms, even though I am from the UK. So whatever floats your boat, there is a way around it. So we are currently in the year 2018 with these magazines. So like I said, they are not the current publications, although current publications are still being made. And like I said, you can get an up-to-date subscription or you can get back issues online should you wish to. So let's jump into it, guys, shall we? We are on issue 71, which is this issue here. It says 25 patterns to hook now, including an easy poncho, which is the asymmetric trend at the time. You can meet Sue Pinner. There's pattern clubs, crochet alongs and more. And it says game set and match, racket cover, bottle holder, lanyard, socks, visor and more. Plus baby blanket, pretty shawl, colorful belt, star cushion and lacy cowl. So with the tennis theme, I am thinking they did this issue in reference to Wimbledon, which is a tennis championship here in the UK. And that is what they have based this issue on. Remember, this is from 2018, but you can get this issue online should you wish to. So let's dive in, guys. Let's see what they have to offer. So here are... Uh, pictures of the projects that we find inside there is this shirt here there is a visor there is a water bottle cover there is a lanyard and there are some socks I believe yes indeed every issue they feature two designers who are given the same yarn but they come up with their own creation using that yarn and we know I normally ask you which you prefer out of the two so we'll look at that in more detail in just a second there is also a crochet workshop in this issue, which teaches you how to make this belt here. Other projects inside is this beautiful blanket, the edging to this tra these trousers or pants. There is this item here. There is a cushion which looks right up Mamfa Street. 
there is this here. The free gift was to make a Jammy Dodger tape measure cover, which I do believe I have in the bag of freebies upstairs. Now, I do have most of the um, freebies that came with issues, but not all. So we will go through those after we have gone through all the magazines that I have. There is also this here, and there are also these cute little appliques here for a sheep and the poncho. So let's take a closer look where you can see bigger pictures of these designs. Lots of adverts, as you can expect in a magazine. There is a section here, double page, where they are talking about the latest crazes of the time, what people are um, really interested in and getting on board with. And they also showcase some inspiring books. Now, Normally I don't go into these books in much detail because I don't know if they're still available but there is The Whimsical Stitches which is a book that I would really love to own but I don't yet have. There are the Zumagurumi series and you can still get these nowadays. Um, there are more articles about some of the things that were um, of peak interest back then and some more there as well. Okay, and then the first pattern we come to is for that tape measure that we got the kit for free with this magazine. So when I find this, I will have the pattern to go along with it. Now, a jammy dodger here in the UK is a biscuit that is very popular or a cookie for you guys across the pond. It does not look like this. It looks like this. This is a custard cream. This is um, a party ring. That's a pink wafer. Just some of the different cookies or biscuits that we eat here in the UK. And actually, this biscuit here is my middle son's favourite. So I think I will have to make this at some point. So like I said, we get the pattern for it. It is in UK terms, um, but it is an absolute fun way of covering a plain and boring tape measure. So that might be something that I do make from one of these magazines one day. OK, and now we get into the sporty ideas that we looked at just now. It's game, set and match. Get kitted out for summer with our ace set of tennis inspired clothes and accessories. New balls, please. So there is a picture of the socks. And yes, they are crocheted because it is simply crochet magazine. So all of the patterns in this magazine are crochet patterns. There is the top featured on the front cover very cute love the color palette there is your tennis racket cover right here that's pretty cool to be fair now i don't play tennis and i don't have a tennis racket but i think that is a very very cute idea she seems very happy with it as well then how to crochet yourself a lanyard if you have to have a pass to get into somewhere and don't forget guys this doesn't have to be for sporting events maybe you use a lanyard for your id in your workplace so maybe you could incorporate that there is a visor to keep the sun out of your face when you're playing tennis but again a visor can be used in other circumstances there is a super cute water bottle holder and actually, my children use these bottles for their drinks bottles at school. So if ever they wanted a holder, this could be an option. You can change the colour palette as well, guys. Just don't ever forget that whatever colour palette is in a pattern, you can change it to whatever colour palette suits you. So don't ever be afraid to do that. I never used to do that, but I have started doing that more and more to make it more relevant to me. So, yes, those were the patterns there. And then it goes on to a more in-depth pattern with the T-shirt. Okay. So then we have an article called Kate's Journal from the studio. Kate Bruning has had a great time with new and old friends teaching crochet workshops despite some technical issues and typical festival weather. So this article is all about this lady here and she features in these magazines heavily as she does patterns regularly for this magazine. So these are some of the things that she was up to at the time and it just showcases some of the things that she has made. She does crochet workshops and there are other things here that are being showcased also. And I think in a magazine it is really lovely to have articles about designers that you may not know about so you can learn a little bit more about them. Okay, more more um, 
adverts. Okay, and last um, issue, they did a pillow for Harry and Meghan's wedding. That is, of course, Prince Harry and his wife, Meghan Markle. And actually, in this issue, you get a pattern to create an amigurumi, Prince Harry and Meghan. So there they are. That is what the amigurumi will look like if you do this pattern. Now, I'm probably not going to do this. But it is very cute and a nice way of people um, referencing them at a time when they were heavily in the press because they were due to be married. So there is the pattern for them. Okay, now this one really piques my interest. It's called Cirque de Moore, I think. Now, my pronunciation isn't always great, so apologies if I said that wrong. But it says, hook yourself a little colourful romance with a circus-style cushion by Melissa Masterson. Isn't that cute? I really, really love that. That might have to be something Mantha makes at some point in the future. I love the variety of bright rainbow colours. The design is cute. And who doesn't want a little bit of love in their life, you know? So there we go. Okay, the next pattern is for jewellery beads. So if you don't have any jewellery to match your outfit, this might be something you can do to um, pull your outfit together and create the perfect jewellery accessory. So I'm going to have to be careful how I show this because we're not allowed to show the pattern. But as you can see, they have created these crochet beads. What a fun idea. Now, this would never be anything that I wear, but I can appreciate the creativity behind it. And it is also nice to showcase things that even if they're not your cup of tea, other people might like to do. So there is the pattern for that one. OK, right across the next page is a baby blanket and it says... Now, I always say this word wrong and I am always getting corrected for it. But the way I say it is sweet nugget. But a lot of you say nougat, which is absolutely fine. And it says every nursery needs woolly blankets. And this one by Elizabeth Davis de Hooray is soft and pretty. And it is a super, super gorgeous colourway that they have chosen. But again, you could make it in any colourway you wanted to suit the new um, baby's nursery what the parents require but I really like those pinks and that spring green and it looks like a fairly simple pattern so if anybody I know suddenly wants to have a baby this could be a pattern on hand to make them a baby blanket and there is a better picture at the bottom here of what it looks like beautiful but then I'm always going to gravitate gravitate to things that are made in pink guys because you know after rainbow pink is my favorite color i'm even wearing pink today so and the next article is a good read and it says rainbows and remnants designer susan pinner's experimental approach uncovers the beautiful yarn combinations that result in stunning projects we adore so it's all about rainbow guys so this is an article for me to read for sure but just look at all those beautiful colours and look at this here. Isn't that stunning? Absolutely gorgeous. So there is an article all about that for us to read. And that is the lady herself down there. There she is. Okay, we have an asymmetrical poncho. And it says, psst, works worn off either shoulder. So it's not one that you wear straight across. It is off the shoulder. And it says, sideways look, get, get in on a huge trend for 2018 with the unusual asymmetric styling of Sharon Murphy's lacy poncho. And here it is, guys. Absolutely beautiful. A nice way to accessorize your outfit in the spring and summer gorgeous love it let's have a closer look at those stitches lovely and there is another picture of the model there showing that it is worn off the shoulder so you get the pattern for that one 
Okay, so here is the section where the two designers go head to head and they're calling it Seaside Strolling. We challenge two designers to come up with a fab design, each using the same yarn, which is your favourite. And that's what I ask you every week, guys, to let me know down below which you prefer. And this month they featured Samantha Osmond and Ruth Haydock. So Samantha Osmond made this super lacy scarf. And Ruth Haydock created this cowl. Now they are both absolutely gorgeous and if you notice on this scarf she has done shells and little starfish to go with the seaside theme which I think is super cute. I'm not a great fan of fringe though and out of the two I would be more likely to wear the cowl. So for me it's this one that wins but let me know guys which one you prefer down at the bottom. You do get the patterns for both of what the designers chose to make as well. Now this is super cute. It says you're a star. Make Kate Alinari's cheerful celestial hug of a cushion for a fun and quirky addition to a child's bedroom. Look at this cutie. Now that is a fun cushion if ever I saw one. And I love how they've done his eyes to maybe represent buttons without actually using buttons, which could be a safety feature for children. So that's a super cute touch, and I like his little sideways cute smile. So that is awesome. I really, really do love that one. Okay, now every issue, they do a new Improve Your Skills, and it's the Crochet Colour Class. Last issue, it was orange. This issue, it is moody blue. And it says, discover a colour in every issue and learn how to use it by Kate Bruning. So they are showcasing blue this time. And again, they go through shade, tone and tint. And I have said these in previous issues. So hue, shade, tone and tint. Hue means a colour and shade, tone and tint apply to variations on that colour adding black, grey or white to achieve specific effects. This info will help you find the right colours and make decisions on choosing colours for projects. So with shade, adding black to the original hue will give a rich, intense appearance, which is this one. And then tone, add grey to the original hue for subtle, sophisticated results. And then tint, adding white to the original hue will make a softer pastel palette. So there we go. And then it goes into this page here, the colour blue. It gives you a little bit on colour theory. Now, if blue is your chosen colour, then the ultimate um, contrast would be orange. Here are examples of colours that work well together in a palette. And there's just a lovely article learning a little bit more about this. And then what we saw here, this, um, I want to call it a snowflake. I don't know if it's a snowflake, but um, how many sides has it got? Maybe a hexagon. So this here featured on this page, you then get a wonderful pattern here called Midnight Bright. Explore the colour blue with Kate Bruning's gorgeous wrap. So there we go, she has made lots of the blue and she has decided that the bright pop of yellow and the pastel pink would just tie this project together. Now for me, this is not a design that appeals to me, it wouldn't be anything that I wear, but this does showcase how to pick other colours to go with your main colour. And you do get the pattern for that one if you would like to make it. Okay, and now it says embellish an outfit. On the edge, trim hems of jeans and trousers with a row of geometric edging designed by Eleonora Tully. And as you can see, they have put this cute crochet edging on the bottom of her jeans here. Super cute way of um, reinventing a pair of boring jeans. Or if the hem of the jeans is starting to look a bit ropey, maybe you could put something on this to give them a bit of extra life. Who knows? I have never, ever put extra crochet embellishments on any of my clothing. So there we go. OK, and then there's a pattern for a diamond blanket and it's called Sierra Summer. 
Create diamond motifs for a blanket inspired by hot climate. Perfect for al fresco evenings by Heather Gibbs. And this is what it looks like. So what we were saying earlier about blue and orange working well together, this is a good example of that. And that is quite a fun design for a blanket. It could be a picnic blanket. It could be a blanket to wrap up in when uh, the evenings turn a bit cooler. But you get the pattern for that one. Okay, in every issue they do yarn reviews. And this time they are reviewing undyed yarns, which is something that I have never owned, never seen, never well, I've seen it on videos and stuff, but I've never actually had it in my possession and I've never looked at it in the store because I have never needed to use undyed yarn. It's, I've never chosen to use undyed yarn. But it says these are six natural wool and alpaca yarns to keep things pure and simple. And you do get the pattern for these cute little sheep here. And the yarns they reviewed are Blacker Breeds, Pure Shetland, Town End Alpacas, Pure Natural Alpaca, um, Bearhouse Alpacas, Pure Devon Alpaca, Daughter of a Shepherd Groom, um, Man Knit Blue Mesh Aran and Shef Sheepfold Black Welsh Mountain. Now, I don't know if any of these are still available on the market, but it does go into what they were like and what their opinions on these yarns were. Okay, we are into the section where readers of this magazine showcase their makes of patterns that have been in previous issues. They send in pictures and they are published here for us to look at. So this is a scarf that was fe this is the one featured in the magazine and this is what that reader chose to do in beautiful rainbow brights. Somebody made the elephant head to mount on the wall. Cute little uh, sweater flowers. Um, here we go. There is this little guy here that was a peacock featured in a previous issue. Then there is a table runner in a colour palette of rainbow. And then somebody did the crochet along that they held. Somebody made one of the monsters featured. And in every issue they do a survey with their readers. They got 143 votes on this one. And the question they asked were, where do you keep your hooks? 6% said down the back of the sofa. 6% <laughs> said in the bottom of a bag, 11% said tucked into your yarn, and 77% said organised in a case or a jar. Now, if I'm being completely honest with you guys, there probably are a couple of hooks tucked in the sofa that have rolled away and I haven't yet retrieved them. I do have hooks in the bottom of a bag with projects that are works in progress. I do tuck my yarn my hook into my yarn if I just put it down for a second to go and grab a drink or go to the bathroom and I do have a case and organized um, pots and things to put my hooks in as well so I actually do all of those how about you how do you store your hooks <laughs> okay and now we're going on to the crochet workshop and it is how to crochet braids and they have made a braided belt to once you have learnt these techniques you've got a project to make so there are some examples of crochet braids here and it gives you a little bit of back information and then how to start off and then the simple five strand braid which results in this and that's what the belt that you get the pattern for looks like here and then there is intricate five strand braid there you go, that looks a little bit like this. And then the pattern for the belt itself. And there we go, so you get the pattern for that one. And as you get towards the back of the magazine, in every issue they will go through crochet essentials. And as you can see from these pictures, they go through everything from holding the hook to making a slip knot, chain stitch, 
and there are pages and pages of all the things that you might need information on turning chains so when you finish a row how many chains do you do for the turn and chain before you continue depending on the stitch that you're using they feature how to count stitches if you're not familiar on how to do that how to change color check your tension all sorts of wonderful things joining rounds when you're doing amigurumi and the conversion charts that I was talking about at the beginning, they let you know the abbreviations used in patterns and articles within this issue. They give you the crochet hook conversion between UK and US with the metric millimetre down the middle. Which hook do I use? So if you're using an Aran yarn, they recommend a five to six millimetre hook. And then the UK versus US terminology conversions. So the UK triple treble is the US double treble. So that is always handy to have. And then they go into the charts and diagrams needed for some of the patterns within the issue. And then there is hook and learn. And this is the spike stitch. Get hook in Lucy Croft's fourth block for the beautiful blanket that everybody who bought these issues for joining along with and that is what it looks like that is super cool I really actually like that I might you might use that in a blanket myself one day so you get told how to make that stitch and then you add it to the blanket that they are all doing the crochet along with all these different stitches featured and then last but not least, you get a hooky treasure and it is an article. It says slow and steady Eleonora Tully seaside sash busting blanket started with leftovers, but has grown into a worldwide community project. And it discusses all of that in the article. Now, normally they show you what's in the next issue and I've got a feeling I might have skipped past it. So do excuse me. I'm going to go back. Here it is. So next issue, what you can expect to see next Monday is this eastern inspired colorful makes amigurumi toff terrier hanging garden self-striping baby jumper which would be a sweater crochet lace masterclass intarsia wave cushion pom-poms and more and then there was a bumper kit for the summer to make this summer mermaid and look at that gorgeous top on the front cover so that is a sneak peek at what is coming up in next week's issue. I hope you have enjoyed looking through that magazine with me, even though when they arrived at the time back when the subscription was new, I obviously looked through these magazines and had a look about what patterns were in there. But for me, because they've been sat in stash for probably five years plus now, let's do the maths. Yeah. Um, it's almost like I've never seen these magazines because I'm revisiting with you. So thank you for doing that with me. I hope there was some inspiration within those magazines for you. Remember, you can get back issues online should you wish, and you can take out a current subscription as well. Um, but yeah, sometimes it's good to have a stash of patterns, guys. If you ever get to the stage where you don't know what to make, grab a pattern from your stash and go for it. Don't be afraid to change up the colours either to suit your palette, your home decor or your personal tastes in what you are making. So guys, I am going to leave it there for this week. Thank you so much for spending your time with me on a Monday. I hope your week is incredibly enjoyable with your crafting and that you have a lot of fun. So until I see you in the next one, stay safe, be kind, look after one another, get some good quality time in with your loved ones and get some good quality crafting time in. I will see you in the next one tomorrow or around the YouTube streets. Love you guys.